friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Mark and I thank you so much for coming by today. I still have my cold so forgive me if my throat seems a little bit off today. Uh, I will try not to clear it and I will try not to cough or sniffle or any of that stuff so <laughs> I hope I don't offend anybody. Uh, one of the things that I want to say before we start is that if you are participating in the Inktober challenge then I applaud you and it doesn't matter how you're approaching it when you do it how much you do what level you're at it doesn't matter any of that stuff doesn't matter to me I just want to just recognize the fact that if you're participating in this challenge then kudos to you and I applaud that because this is a really intense drawing challenge that you know can push the limits of what you expected or what you may have anticipated from such a challenge like this I've been drawing my entire life and I draw usually on a daily basis but even for me, this particular challenge has been challenging. I didn't expect to um, get sick during this challenge, so that kind of threw me off a little bit. I even made a video about that called Five uh, Reasons to Quit Inktober, <laughs> which is actually not as ominous as it sounds. It's actually a very uplifting, motivational video about you know what happens when you get sidetracked or when you fall behind or even get sick like I did. What I wanted to talk about today was actually the unexpected joys and benefits that you might find from a challenge like this. Now, for me, you know, jumping into this thing was sort of just all enthusiasm and all fun. But once I started doing it, I realized, hey, this is, this is actually a commitment and this is going to take time. Some people are spending 15 minutes on a drawing. Some people are spending 15 hours on a drawing. I'm just trying to keep it realistic for my schedule and my life. So I'm just spending about an hour, maybe two on a drawing that I've thought about during the day. Now today is day 11 and it feels like I've been doing this for over a month already and it's only we're not even halfway through yet. But uh, for day 11 the word prompt for today was the word run and so I kept thinking of different ideas and I wasn't sure what I really wanted to do but I was watching baseball the other night and my beloved Red Sox did not make the playoffs and or they did not you know go through the playoffs successfully. So I started thinking about the word home run, and that's what this illustration I'm doing in the video is. It's actually a home run. It's like a charity race for houses. So <laughs> that's my little play on words, and I enjoyed it. I'm having a blast doing Inktober. I hope you are too. And again, I congratulate anybody who's participating in this challenge in any way, shape, or form. If you're only doing it part-time, if you're just kind of dipping your feet in to see what happens, or if you're full-blown all into this thing, doesn't matter how you approach it or what your perspective is on it. You're doing it, and I think that's great. I'm excited for myself, too, because there's so many things that I'm getting from this, and that's what I want to talk about in this video, which, why don't we pick it up right after this coffee break? So yeah, I actually have a couple of videos out there. One of them, like I said, is the five reasons to quit Inktober, and another is 10 reasons to avoid Inktober. Now, both of those videos, again, they may sound ominous, but they're actually very motivational, and they actually encourage you to pursue and to stick with Inktober as a challenge, because it challenges yourself and your drawing and your abilities. What it does also do is it sort of features certain kind of pitfalls, I guess, that you might encounter along the way during a challenge like this. And that's something that I didn't find when I was starting out and looking for information on Inktober. So I figured why not provide that for folks. What I want to provide now is the unexpected joys and benefits of Inktober. As we're all into this kind of, you know, halfway in, we're kind of losing steam. I know a lot of people have been reading about it and seeing it on the internet about people losing steam and getting kind of frustrated. A lot of people are falling behind. That's okay. It's all okay because none of it really matters. This is a fun challenge that is meant to challenge yourself, not for any other reason. So with that, I want to jump right into this conversation and start off with the unexpected joys and benefits of Inktober. Number one, you create a body of work. Now at the end of this challenge, we're going to have 31 drawings that we did day after day after day, and that's a body of work. No artist in history has ever done one picture or one painting or one drawing and then quit forever. That's not how it works. We all tend to, you know, produce and produce, especially regular artists and people who do this a lot. 
you know, we all produce work, but it's not a regular occurrence to do a drawing a day every day. So at the end of this thing, to walk away with a complete body of work, that's a really great benefit. Number two, consistency in your work. One thing you'll find when you're doing a drawing day after day after day is you'll start to see a consistent tone, a consistent sort of either humor or whatever the way you draw is, it's going to come out in your work. And so that consistency will be recognizable. And it goes into number three, which is you'll be developing a style. Now, I've been drawing for a long time, so I already kind of have a style. But for younger artists who don't really know what their style is, this is a great way to help you find your style. Because if you don't think about your style and you just draw, your style will emerge. If you do a drawing every day for 31 days, you'll start to see a pattern evolve and you will start to see your style develop. And you can continue that beyond. And that's the great thing about Inktober is that you don't have to stop at 31 days. You can keep going forever. Number four, brain exercise. <laughs> and I know that sounds kind of weird. I'm no doctor, so I can't come up with any scientific you know, backing for this one. What it does do is it exercises your imagination and it allows you to create and think differently than you normally would. So if you're working from a word prompt or some kind of you know, image prompt, you have to rely on that to sort of put the seed in your head of what you're going to create. If you're just drawing off your own interests, then you've got to find that yourself. And again, it's going to exercise your brain in stretching your imagination and really challenging your creativity. Number five, part of the community. For me, I know if I'm sitting and drawing, I get up really early in the morning and I draw, and I draw for myself. That's who I draw for. There's no audience. There's nobody around watching. There's nobody really looking on. No one really cares. <laughs> That's just how my life is. Oh, well. But the great thing about Inktober is if you're posting your work online, you're being included in a huge community of people, not just locally, but globally. So there's a huge community of people who are interested to see your work and interested for you to see their work. And being part of that community is really great, especially for your mental health and your self-esteem, because this is a supportive community that really just wants everyone to succeed. It's not a competition. It's for fun. Number six, think like a pro. One of the great benefits of a challenge like this is the fact that you're thinking like a professional. You have deadlines, you have goals to set, you have certain parameters you have to meet, and that's what a professional artist or designer has to do on a daily basis. I know in my graphic design world, I always have to think like a pro. And that kind of goes into number seven, which is understanding goals and deadlines. Setting goals for yourself and setting deadlines is a huge part of being successful as an artist. I know a lot of us artists have a hard time just remembering stuff and staying on task, but a challenge like this is a great way to keep on task, to set goals, and to set deadlines. Number eight, stress-reducing meditation. I've talked about this in other videos, and, well, basically, you know, when you immerse yourself in anything and get lost in it, then it's meditation. And that's what this is for me. I don't know if it is for you. It's a stress relief. Now, be warned that this can also be a stress creator if you're stressing out about the drawings or you're falling behind. I hope nobody's feeling that way. So this can be a great stress-reducing meditation exercise, and that's a huge benefit to, again, your mental health and your state of wellness. Number nine, building self-esteem and confidence. And that's a huge one because the more you draw, the more confident you get and the more self-esteem you, you build up. And that's good for anything. The more you repeat these efforts, the better you get and the more confidence you get. And that's great just to go through life. Number 10, inspiring others and being inspired. And that's what I love about the community aspect is the fact that when you put your work online, you're going to inspire other people to draw better because there's always going to be someone better than you, but there's always somebody that's not as good as you. And that's the beauty of inspiring others and being inspired. Number 11, better able to handle criticism and compliments. So when someone says, you know, wow, you did a great job with that. That's really cool. It's a great way to see how other people handle those compliments and how you can feel those compliments as well. The same thing goes with criticism. You can also use that community to see how people handle criticism. Like, wow, dude, your, your work is really nice, but those hands are all backwards. Instead of getting upset or, or feeling defeated, you could see how other people might manage that kind of a comment and actually use it to their advantage. Number 12, it opens up your observation skills. 
I know for me, I walk around through my regular life at work and with my family and so forth, and I start seeing things a little bit differently because I wonder, hmm, can I use that in this challenge? Is there something here that I can actually, you know, take from my real life and use in my challenge? For example, these houses. I just had to look out my window and see a couple of houses in my neighborhood and work off those as references. Now, I won't tell you which ones because some of them are just generic, but there are a couple in there that I actually had to look at a real house for a reference. Number 13, it enhances your problem-solving skills. When you sit and stare at a blank page with nothing but a word or a theme to go from, it can seem kind of daunting. And I know for me that I have to wait for that creative spark to fire. And once it fires, typically what happens is a blaze comes from that. I'll all of a sudden have lots of creative ideas. Some are really good, some are really terrible, but they all help in that part of the problem-solving process. Number 14, it improves your focus. Anytime you get kind of consumed with an intense routine like Inktober or any kind of a drawing challenge, it can kind of feather out into other aspects of your life. And that's what's so great about this is that where this is a singular focus, you can then go into something else in your life and be more organized and be more creative with other things that you do. It doesn't just have to stick with Inktober. It can feather out into other areas of your life. Number 15, it improves your memory. There was a bunch of uh, researchers in Sweden that had done, it was in 2016, I forget the whole story, but they discovered that creative therapy actually helped Alzheimer's patients. It helped with their memory, it helped with their cognitive skills, all kinds of things. So a drawing challenge like this can actually improve your memory because you're so focused that it's accessing parts of your brain that work for memory. And that's a great benefit for everybody. Number 16, it improves hand-eye coordination. So yes, while you're drawing, your hand-eye coordination is going to get really, really tight. And you're going to be, your, your little eyes in your head are going to be watching every line that you're drawing, which is great for doing everything else in your life as well. Number 17, you can reach new audiences. I know when I go to a coffee shop or, or just a library or even sit on a park bench and I start drawing, I have a lot of times people will come up to me and ask me, hey, what are you drawing? So Inktober allows me the opportunity to take my sketchbook out and go places and sit down and draw, and I'm reaching new audiences. People take an interest in what I'm drawing, and I enjoy showing it off because it's like, hey, this is what I do. Number 18, freedom of self-expression. There's no rules to this game. There's no rules to drawing. It's all about what you want to do and how you want to do it. So you're free to express whatever you want, drawing whatever what way you want or whatever it is you want. Number 19, unblocking artist block. When you have a challenge that you force yourself to do and you have artist block, this will actually help bring you out of that artist block instead of forcing it in a different way. This way allows you to take on a challenge, process it, and work toward unblocking your artist block. And believe me, I understand artist block. That's why I did a whole video of reasons to avoid Inktober. Number 20 is my favorite one, and that is Inktober can help save you money. I don't have to go out right now and buy new paints or buy new art supplies because I'm using the ones that I already have and it's saving me time, it's saving me money. I'm also not going out to eat, I'm not going out to you know, see a movie because the two hours that I would have spent at a movie, I'm actually sitting in my space drawing. So it's gonna save me money in one way or another. So I hope these 20 unexpected joys and benefits of Inktober they kind of resonate with you and I hope they're helpful and I hope this video was enjoyable watching me draw this uh, this number 11 the run and I can't wait to see what everybody else is doing for Inktober I can't wait to see at the end what we all come away with so if you haven't subscribed please subscribe below and thank you so much for watching and taking your time today God bless